Okay, hi there, I'm Rochelle. And although I am not doing sixth grade and I have not homeschooled sixth grade, I know it is all separate subjects. Um, I have homeschooled K4 twice and K5 to my daughter. Um, and then I was homeschooled all the way grade school, all the way through high school and with Abeka mostly. Then I also taught in private school. So I'm gonna give you a little overview really quick of some of the stuff I remember teaching in private school. The highest grade I taught was fifth grade, but that was just English. It was um, like grammar in a Latin school. Um, but then I have taught like up to third grade Abeka. So here we go. So the first thing you wanna do is figure out what day you wanna start school. So this is in the, let's say, this is my first grade math curriculum book. Okay, so you figure out, just so you know where this is. This is in the front of the folder here, the front of the book, very, very front. It will give you a guide on when you start your lessons. So see here, it looks like they started on August 23rd, the first lesson. Now, what I did was I made my own calendar. Now, this is obviously from 2017, but this is how I did my two girls. This is for Allison. This is for Juliana. This is how I kept straight what lesson day they were on. So it's really important to try to keep all the subjects on the same lesson or this square is going to be confusing and full of different lesson numbers for different subjects for each kid. Keep it consistent with just the kid um, because some days your younger one is going to have a better day than an older one. Um, actually, maybe I think you only said you had one kiddo in school. So you're probably not gonna need to have two. Um, so that was two years ago for me. This was just last year. Um, we finished up in, uh, well, we didn't finish up, but in July, we were on lesson 115 here and I just kind of quit because it got a busy summer and all kinds of stuff happened. So we kept going, but I didn't write it down. Um, so we figured out a start date and each day was penciled in because there were days that I had to erase and rewrite all my lessons. And some days, um, we just didn't do school at all. And, oh, that was 17. Okay, so anyway, back to here. This is, so once you figure out when you're gonna start, then you go to how you wanna set up your daily schedule. Now, with a lot of homeschool moms, they're flexible when they start. It could be 8.45 in the morning, 8.15, it could be nine. Mine was usually around 8.45 or nine. I have four kids, so it was really hard <laughs> to get everybody fed and to get everybody put, put up you know, naps or playing in a room and starting homeschool with my girls. So um, here we go. Now I know this is first, it's not sixth, but you will figure out in the beginning, it'll say your Bible is this, that should take this long to do your Bible class and you can schedule it. Okay, so you're gonna do your schedule from here to here. And then you're gonna have, I don't know, your reading class or grammar, language. You're gonna have history. You will have spelling, writing, Um. My phone battery is going dead already. So I will um, show you a little bit more of this in just a second. Okay, so here we go again. Um, all right, so you're gonna figure out what your daily schedule would be and put in your different subjects. You can arrange it how you want. Now, um, so this school day would be from 8.15 to 12.25. That looks like it's including a half hour lunch and it's doing some reading homework with the young first grader, um, seat work time, explanation times, and there's usually AM and PM readings, okay? So you would have different subjects and different work. And obviously some of your classes would be longer than a five minute session or handwriting, I think. Um, now, if this seems like a great, this is a great start. Okay, now as a school teacher in a private school, what I did, I wanna show you my lesson plans. This was when I taught kindergarten. And I did, here is all the scheduled time across the top. Okay, so all day long, this on the top of my lesson plan was this. And then on the side, um, and then I would also say what subject, I'm sorry, on the top I would say what subject it was, circle time, this is Bible, this is the time for Bible. And then what is in this square? Lesson one. So everything in Bible lesson one, this is just kind of what I taught. And I need to go grab my Bible folder. So that made it um, all separate and easy to do. So if you're doing sixth grade, you go get the Bible books, the Bible uh, curriculum guide, the memory cards or the, the pictures for the lesson, um, whatever stuff that you would need for sixth grade and it would all be there. So if you felt that you needed to be really organized and oh, here you go, this is my kindergarten classroom and 
K4 classroom. And um, the, the alphabet and some vowels. Anyway, just so you kind of know what you're looking at here. And my phone is dying again. Um, just a moment. Okay. So something else that goes on is it gives you the five day schedule and when you're going to have tests and quizzes, I think this is mostly just tests on the side. So this is the first grade test cycle. Uh, in private school, I always had spelling tests on a Friday. Um, uh, my girls this year, I couldn't homeschool them, unfortunately. So they are having tests on Friday, uh, but homework is over the weekend. So um, it is different when you homeschool. Anyway, so if you go and look, okay, lesson five is always a spelling test, but it shows you that they kind of put the phonics and spelling test on Thursday. You want to have day one starting on a Friday, but then it gets all mixed up when there's holidays or days that you skip. So as a homeschooler, that's what's flexible. Okay, so moving on. I know like as you go through here, there's like so much writing, so much content. Bible verses and how you grade and the overview and how you allow times for things and grade things. And anyway, keep going. That will show up later. It will, you, you'll get there when there's a test or a quiz. Okay, so this is what's hard. Okay, lesson one. This is all of math lesson one. It's completely overwhelming. It's so much. I tend to kind of ignore those. I figured it out as I went along. So this is what you're going to be doing in this whole lesson one. Learning to count here, identifying numbers, and then you're going to show them how to add. Now, when you ever see this, when you see this pencil, that is when you're going to write it on the chalkboard. So it says write numbers one to five in mixed order. Okay, then you can just see what this says here. I know this is not sixth grade, but if you had a math class, you would be writing, uh, you would probably be doing algebra, pre-algebra maybe. Um, here, this is what you're going to need. So I would have to go get zoo animals. I would have to get this little chart, uh, print stuff out. And I think it's also a song of some sort. Then I need to go get this math paper. The front is work with you. The back is alone. They work on their own. Then visuals. So once again, this goes with this, um, this little chart, you can see it's right over there, but that would be for first grade. And it's also kinder anyway, more, more supplies that I need. So this is like all supplies that I would need to show and use with first grade. And then here is like objects for counting. Okay, over here in my little chart, objects for counting, I have little straws. It wasn't too hard to just find, go get straws in your drawer that you use for your kiddos or Legos. Legos are really fun. Use different things for counting. Anyway, I know this is first grade. I have to keep remembering, not six. So uh, more things for counting. These are just, this is a pointer that they use in class. Okay, procedure, warm up. Okay, introduce zoo. So really, you don't have to use this word for word. You just kind of, okay, you read this in your head and you just talk about it for a minute or two. Then here, okay, you're going to count one to 10. And this tells you how you can actually do it if you have no clue. You know, if you're um, a scientist and you're like, how do I teach kids how to do this stuff? You know, maybe you can figure it out. Anyway, <laughs> um, then more instruction here. So counting one to 10, counting one to 10. So this is another style of counting. Counting numbers to five, number words. So you're counting one is also with a word. Okay, this is more illustration. Okay, keep going. Um, the hand is, what is it? Manipulatives, things that their hands can use, stuff that they can do. Place value cards, all right, turn the page. Um, more stuff. Okay, this is where you go to the, the board that you drew on. So you can use a whiteboard, a chalkboard, you can use a pen and paper. I just bought a little pad like this. I think I got this at um, Dollar Store and the back was lined, so that would be for younger grades, but it was great for using my Expo pens on it, like a whiteboard. Okay, combine practice, combination practice. Um, it kind of just explains what you can do. Some things you definitely can skip. Okay, so this is just get some thinking. Sometimes I skip that when I would do homeschool. Um, just kind of read ahead. Um, and you can tell what they need. A lot of this could be for group settings with kids instead of one-on-one. -on -one. So if it has like five, I'm not reading this right now, but if it has like five examples to do with the kids, pick one, whichever, whatever it is, whatever the examples are, just pick one to do with them because you're just burning them out with all the examples you have to give. If they get it with one, just move on. Here is the worksheet. And this kind of explains what page one and page two is. If it is bold, see, this is bold right here. That is what you say, and they answer in italics. Okay, and my little three-year-old walked up. Okay, so what else? Oh, and then here's lesson two. That's it. Math would be over. You're done. Um, 
I hope that helps a little bit. Uh, I, I don't know if you're doing it on your own or if you are using video, but I can cover the video in another little tiny video if you want. 